Some players are so emotionally attached to their Yi Song Ye investment that just the mere title or thumbnail of this video could very well get me canceled without players even watching the video and seeing what I have to say. But for brand new free to play players in Rise of Kingdoms, I just don't really think that Yi Song Ye is a reasonable investment for like 99% of you. And that's actually kind of a problem with Rise of Kingdoms right now, which I want to allude to a little little bit later in this video but how the mighty have fallen am I right I mean if you watch any video even from a year ago or beyond two years ago whatever pretty much everybody's advice myself included and basically any other youtuber would tell you that you should first expertise your Yi Song Ye in Rise of Kingdoms. He comes around very early in the game. He's one of the earliest Wheel of Fortune commanders you can get your hands on. And the reason for this was simple. His expertise bumped up his skill damage to 1700 and it made it a circular AOE. And when you combine this with the Rage Engine and the 50% skill damage bonus, it was kind of a no brainer. Like the amount of AOE damage he could output was insane, even in later KVKs. So how do you have a commander that was such an easy no brainer no questions asked of course you can expertise him how did he fall from that grace gradually over the years and you guys have to remember that rise of kingdoms is over five years old now so it's taken quite a while for Yi song ye to really fall from grace and to lose that crown but i've been thinking about this more lately since herman prime came into the game and especially uh osher bonapal okay i like how i just clicked on gilgamesh because they just look so similar anyway with the introduction of these two new legends legendary archer commanders I feel like the relevance of Yi Song Ye has never been lower and so I want to talk about that in this video now first of all I put up a community poll about two hours ago we've got 228 votes and I just wanted to get a general idea as to how many of you guys are still using Yi Song Ye now in my mistake I, I made an error here I should have specified PvP I know a lot of people probably still use him for other things if you guys didn't see this poll by the way you're probably not subscribed to the channel so go ahead and consider subscribing if you want to see more Rise of Kingdoms content but as you can see here about 62 percent of people said that they still use YSG and that he's good five percent of people said that they use him but he's kind of bad like he's not trading very well and 33 percent of people said that they don't use him at all and that's a pretty even breakdown I mean if you do the math here then two-thirds of people are still using Yi Song Ye and one-third of people aren't and again this is a very small sample size of people that are just following rise of kingdoms guides on YouTube. So by no means is that like the end all be all like, okay, well, everyone's using YSG. So of course he's still good. Like obviously it's a tiny sample size, but it's, it's just some anecdotal data that I figured might be somewhat useful to those of you that are watching. And if I'm being honest with you guys, if you already have YSG expertise, then there's probably a couple of different instances where you can still make good use out of him in PVP scenarios. And I even mentioned him with Boudicca prime in my recent video where I talked about the seven best open field marches in Rise of Kingdoms. Yi Song Ye was there when we talked about some of the different archer pairings, right? So if you already have Yi Song Ye, that's a totally different story. I mean, you've already made the investment. It's a sunk cost and his kit still, I mean, you could still deal a lot of damage with him, especially with his museum and his relic. But when we ask ourselves, who should be investing in Yi Song Ye today? Like the list is shockingly short in my opinion. Okay. First of all, if you're a new player and you spend money on the game, then you probably should be investing in Yi Song Ye. His Wheel of Fortunes are worth spinning as some of the earliest Wheel of Fortunes in the game. You're going to get a lot of value out of those wheels. I mean, you're going to get a ton of resources, speed ups, a lot of things that you need to progress your account in the early game. You're going to get a lot of, that's like the only time by the way, that gold stars from the wheel actually matter. Okay. And the very early game, gold stars are a bottleneck, right? So the early Wheel of Fortunes actually have a lot of value for those new players and the one that is worth spinning the most I would argue is Yi Song Ye because he's actually a somewhat decent commander compared to everything else in the early game but the only people that are really going to get enough gems to spin his wheels effectively are people who are spending money or if you're a hardcore free to play player and when I say hardcore some people are thinking like oh well you know I'm really invested in the game I'm watching YouTube videos about it like I'm a hardcore player and like probably not if I'm being honest with you like most people are even even like really good free to play players are not hardcore players okay when I say a hardcore free to play player I mean somebody who has a main account and two three four farms who also plays at least two hours a day if you're not playing at least 
two hours a day i don't i mean like you're not hardcore okay you also have to enjoy the grind of chaining barbarians hardcore free to play players are constantly chaining barbarians in the open field and you're also a new player who is like trying to get t5 as fast as possible i think that is like in my mind that is a hardcore player okay um, and if you don't fit into that bucket as a brand new free to play player then you're first of all probably not gonna have the gems to really spin his wheel a ton and you're probably not gonna be getting enough universal sculptures to max him in a reasonable amount of time anyway when you also consider the fact that you're gonna be working on your buildings and technology okay so those are two types of people that should be expertise in Yisong Ye I think a third type of person is somebody who's just they don't have the patience to wait until season of conquest to invest in a commander at the end of the day this is a video game right so what is most important is that you have fun with the game and if it's fun for you to you know see the progress of a commander getting stronger over time then really the only commander that it's even worth discussing in that realm is Yi Song Ye in the early game so if you don't have any patience then okay go ahead and invest in Yi Song Ye and the final person I think might consider investing in Yi Song Ye is a new player who thinks that maybe they'll never get any amount of sculptures from any archer mightiest governor in the future right and I think that that's ridiculous. I think most kingdoms, even if the, even if they don't, you know, rig the mightiest governor, if they don't actually organize it. Right. I think that you can still win, you know, two sculptures, three sculptures, whatever. You could still get a handful of sculptures for a commander for consecutive MGEs and eventually unlock that commander. Right. So, you know, it, it sucks that it might take a much longer amount of time for free to play, but I do think that it's still possible for free to play players to unlock mightiest governor commanders. You might not win the event. I'm not saying you're going to win the event and you might not even unlock them all in one go, but you can still unlock mightiest governor commanders. But let's just say that you're a free to play player. And for whatever reason in your kingdom, you're just never going to get a single sculpture from a, from a mightiest governor commander, then, okay, fine. You, you know, you might consider getting Yi Song Ye if you're going to run two Archer Marches in the late game. And that's the other really big thing here because Yi Song Ye would never be considered in a single Archer March these days. And that's for a couple of reasons, right? First of all, Zhuge Liang at 5511 is going to be outclassing an expertise Yi Song Ye. Okay. He's got higher damage factor on his active skill. He's got a really impressive debuff there. He also gives you 30% of Archer health, 5% Archer damage, a chance to dispel control effects like silence, which is insane on top of that, a direct damage factor. And then here you're getting a 5% skill damage bonus, archer attack bonus, etc. There's bonus damage on his fourth skill. So even at 5511, that's 190 legendary commander sculptures. Yue Liang is going to be performing better than a fully expertise Yi Song Ye. And I'm not, that's not clickbait or anything. Like you just look at their kit, you know that that's the case. Secondly, Herman Prime is insane. He is a really powerful archer commander who also shows up on the Wheel of Fortune. And so when you consider that a 5511 Yue Liang is 190 sculptures and you can get Herman Prime to 5551 for what, 380 sculptures? That's a total of 570 legendary commander sculptures sculptures to get both of these commanders in a usable state and that's cheaper than the 690 you need for Yi Song Ye, right and I'm not saying that you should stop investing at these commanders like Julia Leong should be expertise he's a great commander right so I'm just saying like the minimum investment in these two is cheaper than a full Yi Song Ye, right and it's gonna be miles more effective and it's a complete pair right so it's like it's no question that it's just a better investment and then you have to consider the fact that as a free-to-play player you're going to be building an army of more than just one troop type right like you're not going to just only build archer marches you're going to be building an infantry march and a cavalry march and some of these other commanders are just so powerful that you can't afford to not invest in them like you need them here and the power creep in season of conquest is just so high these days that the 690 sculptures that you put here for Yi Song Ye, you're really gonna feel bad about that when you start to see these other commanders that are just like so insanely strong. And finally, the reason that we're talking about this now more than ever is because Herman Prime and Ashurbanipal are in the game, right? And so before Herman Prime and Ashurbanipal came into the game, you would typically run a Boudicca Prime primary with Zhuge Liang secondary, obviously. But if you ever wanted to run two Archer Marches, then you really didn't have a choice but to run Yi Song Ye. I mean, he just was the, he made the most sense to put in that lineup. I mean, basically everybody agreed that Yi Song was there for the second March. And these days, now that Boudicca Prime has been bumped out of that first army, first Archer army slots, 
she is now in the second army slot for archers right and so then you have to ask yourself well who do you pair her with can you pair her with a song of course you can if you already have a song that's a great pairing you can do it first of all it's extremely slow and it doesn't have the health that Yue Liang has so like you know you might be in a little bit of trouble there but sure you can still run it but when you consider a brand new player is that the best choice that they have for a second archer march when you consider the cost of East Ye of being 690 sculptures for less sculptures you could do a 5515 nebu is it going to perform as well as East Ye? well it's not going to output the same amount of damage obviously but it's a little bit tankier and it has march speed which is extremely important in season of conquest especially considering that Boudicca only has 10 percent or you can even go for the ashabatapal right why would you go for the nebu now when you go for ashabatapal he's better he has more damage factor here he has more stats here a variety of stats the march speed is conditional unfortunately but you also get 20 percent skill damage here on the third skill and some normal damage taken reduction on the fourth skill and so in this scenario right like let's just say you do like a five 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 one ashurbanipal or something like that i mean you could have a comparable commander to e song Ye for a much cheaper cost for 380 legendary commander sculptures for nebu or ashurbanipal okay and so again it's not so much the fact that e song Ye is no longer the best choice for your secondary archer march you could make the argument that he still is sure but you have to look at the value proposition of how much you're spending for that ESA 690 sculptures is insane for a commander that is teetering on the edge of relevance and a year from now I mean what are we going to be doing in a year from now like I can almost guarantee you that no one's going to be using him in PvP if they're running two archer marches right like that's just not going to be the case and I haven't used my Yi Song Ye in PvP in a very long amount of time as soon as Yue Leon came out he was gone he was out on the bench and that's because I run only one archer march but even now if you're running two archer marches even now you're considering putting him on the bench right and so if you're just starting the game today I just think that that's a really expensive cost for a commander that might never see PvP I mean beyond like your first KBK and you know sprinkling him in you know depending on how quickly you can get his expertise you know obviously you can use him in the early game and stuff like that but in the early game for the first you know six to nine or twelve months depending on how active you are you're still going to be working on getting your tier five units right so you're not even going to be like fully in fighting mode yet unless you're a big spender in which case we already talked about of course you're going to be maxing isong yay so i think a lot of new players and especially free to play new players are just going to be skipping isong yay and that kind of is is not great for the state of rise of kingdoms in terms of progressing the season of conquest because a year ago you had this obvious choice an obvious progression of okay of course you know you do the isong yay and then once you get to season of conquest then you get the Boudicca and boom now you have like a meta archer march you can use that and yada yada it's a whole thing or you could even go the route of getting CPO Prime and you could even run CPO Prime primary with Yi Ye secondary that was a route that a lot of infantry players went and that's totally fine but now today he's the same commander but he's playing on a different playing field right the, the game has changed the playing field has changed and new players you know don't really have that obvious progression path for their account anymore and I think that that's a problem I think that free-to-play players and new players need to be able to think that the investments they're making in the early game are going to be impactful in the late game otherwise you know you kind of get jaded you kind of you kind of lose interest right you feel like what you're doing right now is not going to matter later and so why would you even bother right and I think that that's not a good place for the game to be in and I think that we need a some sort of change has to happen to make some early game commanders relevant again now what could they do to fix this well first of all you know they could give players more ways to get e song a right like they could put him in gold keys and they could you know put him you know in, in instead of ethel fled in, in the expedition shop or whatever um, i don't think they're probably going to do that and the other thing they could do is just make his active skill circular by default i think that would be huge i think you know zuri leong has circular by default heraclius has circular by default we have i think theodora is circular by default if i'm not mistaken so plenty Many of commanders have circular AOE by default. Isong is actually the only one that has a conditional circle besides I think Harold has to be swarmed to get circular AOE but that's a little bit of a different story in a world where plenty of commanders have a circular AOE why is it for Isong Ye that it's locked to his expertise I think that you know if they made his AOE 1400 keep it 1400 but make it a circle right I think that would be a really good place to be for Isong Ye because then you could argue okay well 5515 or 5511 even B 
becomes a really attractive early game investment i mean that's 5511 if this was a 1400 circle that's 190 sculptures that's a really cheap investment and then you try your luck with that 50 percent skill damage on the last skill i mean that's that's huge right like that would be a really big game changer for him and then yes the expertise would still bump it up by 300 it would be kind of like a saladin scenario where like you don't really need the extra damage on the expertise unless you're a whale or whatever i think that would be a really nice touch or something that i talked about in a previous video that was actually mentioned by one of the people who commented on my video and i do apologize that i forgot your name but what if they made isong a's second skill skill and also his museum a universal buff right like if instead of archer defense this was all defense just for any troop type and then instead of archer attack here it was just flat attack 100 effectively changing him from an archer commander to a leadership commander and then he's basically the most versatile secondary in the game i think that would pull up his relevance once again that would make him more you know people would feel better about investing in him because now all of a sudden the Scipio prime isong a combo is even more powerful all of a sudden now the you know julia leong isong a combo is more powerful and you know isong a would still be pretty weak right he still doesn't have that march speed so there's a lot you know about that that's unfortunate but i don't know i'm just kind of throwing out a couple of different ideas here because i feel like the path for a new free-to-play player or even a low spend or whatever is feeling a bit rocky at this point where like i don't even know what to recommend people you know if they're just starting the game now it's like what do you recommend well, I recommend that you don't do anything for seven months until you get T5 and you enter season of conquest or season three of KVK, right? Like that's not a really good, that's not a really exciting answer. Like when you tell people like, oh, like you can have fun in seven months, like that's not like that's not really great so I don't know maybe I'm making this out to be a, a bigger deal than it is but I feel like you know as Isong is relevance is is on the decline I feel like it it makes the new player experience worse and worse and and I I think that's a problem for well really that's a problem for any game right like new players should have a good experience always honestly this might be also a controversial opinion but if they changed the skill damage here to 15 percent March speed the double relic or 20 percent march speed right which isn't unheard of by the way because i mean if we look at julius caesar you could see that on his double relic he gets 20 percent march speed so like they've already set the precedent for doing something like that for early game commanders okay so if they gave isong a 20 percent defense 20 percent march speed or 15 percent march speed instead of the skill damage i mean he's already got enough skill damage right i actually think that that would bring up his relevance also i think one of the worst parts about Isong Ye and one of the main reasons that people didn't run Zhuye Liang primary Isong Ye secondary that much some people did but the reason that a lot of people didn't is because if you watch how slow this march is it is absolutely impossible to retreat from a swarm if you're Zhuye Liang with Isong Ye gets targeted you can run away all you want but you're probably the slowest thing on the field which is really tragic right and so if Isong Ye had the 15 or 20 percent march speed well then you can make the argument that you might still invest him in the early game that way by the time you get to the late game then you could pair with Yue Liang and then you'll actually at least have a march that is decently fast right I think that's one of the biggest advantages that somebody like Ashurbanipal or somebody like Nebu has in the open field is that they have that march speed and that helps them just move a little bit whereas the Yue Liang with Yi Song Ye can't do go anywhere bro anyway guys I've been kind of rambling a little bit in this video um it's kind of just a topic that I've been thinking about a lot because I'm I'm thinking about other video topics and the early game experience is obviously really important for a lot of the videos that I make and so you know I, I've been trying to digest the Isong Ye problem for you know uh, for a little bit now and so I just wanted to make this video and uh, kind of put my two cents out there let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below you know maybe you can make a compelling argument for why all players should still be expertising Isong Ye I'd be happy to listen to those in the comment section below while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it does help out the channel a ton it'll push this video out into the youtube algorithm so the rise of kings players might see it and of course like i mentioned earlier consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace